In his presentation, How Food Safety is Changing the Transportation Industry, Don Durham used six words to describe the sanitary transportation rule. Be prepared to assume more risk. He then emphasized that not knowing is not an option. Why did he describe the sanitary transportation rule in this fashion? Because it has brought about major change in how carriers will be held responsible for the hauling of food. This means that it's not only imperative transportation companies are training their drivers on their part in the transportation of food. As of April 6, 2017, it will be a requirement. Let's look at this in more detail and then delve into how the Infinity platform can streamline this process for carriers. Carriers and loaders are subject to training requirements designed for their part in the transportation process. For example, a driver will need training on things like how the pre-cool works, how temperature monitoring works, what the procedures are for when a trailer is being unloaded. A loader will need training on things like the functionality of the cleaning process, what was in the load before, what's in the load now, and what procedures to follow because of the cargo, what can be used for the sweep out. Anyone involved in the transportation of food needs to have awareness training of potential food safety problems during transport and of basic sanitary transportation practices. The FDA has said they are creating an hour-long quote-unquote awareness training piece. However, this is only minimum training and they are not sure when they will be releasing the training. This means transportation companies should not wait for the FDA awareness training. They need to be proactive in training their drivers for exactly what the job function is the drivers and loaders also will be doing. There isn't a one hour long course that will cover all of what a transportation company does. For example, a transportation company that delivers enclosed boxes needs to train their team on the best practices for transporting food in enclosed boxes. Farms need to train their team on the best practices for managing produce. Transportation carriers delivering high risk foods like seafoods need to train their drivers on the protocol around high-risk foods. And here's the thing, there is no set protocol out there for training on all of these various areas. Transportation companies need to be doing custom training. Again, there is something the FDA has an intention to produce for awareness training, but it's not going to alleviate the responsibility that carriers have to teach their drivers, loaders, and other employees about what their individual responsibilities are in the food supply chain. The next thing we want to look at is the record requirements under this new regulation. Transportation companies must keep training records for 12 months beyond the job function of each person trained. So, if a driver is promoted, retires, or is fired or quit, that driver's records must be retained for 12 months beyond the final day of their last position, i.e. 12 months beyond the final day before their promotion, 12 months beyond the final day they retired, or 12 months beyond the day they were fired or the day that they quit. What needs to be kept? As far as training goes, a company needs to keep the date the person was trained, the type of training that was given, and the person that was trained. All of this information can be found in the training record area on Infinity for transportation companies who use our platform. Now let's take a more in-depth look at record retention requirements. The FDA gives transportation companies 24 hours to provide a copy of their training records when the FDA requests them. While some transportation companies may choose to store paper records in a room off-site, and they can do that as long as they can access them within 24 hours, the reporting feature on our platform makes this much more convenient, and the FDA has announced that records can be stored electronically. So online training is a fantastic way through this system to ensure that all of the awareness and customized training that carriers are doing can be easily reported to the FDA if an inspection should happen at a transportation company. Additionally, transportation companies must retain copies of their agreements with shippers and loaders, assigning tasks for a period of 12 months beyond termination of the agreements with the shippers or with their loaders. 
All of these documents can be stored electronically in the resource area on Infinity. Each agreement can be assigned out to drivers or loaders also via the classroom area on Infinity, and drivers and loaders can acknowledge that they have read and understand these agreements. Now let's take a look at some of the areas where custom training is needed to ensure maximum compliance with the training requirement of the sanitary transportation rule. Note that one of the key features that sets the Infinity platform apart from other platforms on the market is how easy it is to upload and assign out this custom training to all employees and drivers who need training in these areas. Anyone who touches the food in any way throughout the hauling process needs to be trained on their specific role in safe food handling and transportation. There are nine areas where transportation companies should ensure their drivers and other employees have not only read their procedures, but that those same people thoroughly understand them. These nine areas include arrival procedures for inbound carriers, arrival procedures for outbound carriers, product staging procedures, receiving procedures, shipping procedures, stowage procedures, trailer inspection procedures, cleaning and sanitizing procedures, and compliance with temperature control requirements procedures. The first thing transportation companies need to do is create training on all of the different procedures that we just talked about. The most popular method for doing this is simply recording a PowerPoint presentation with voiceover, similar to the presentation you're watching now. The easiest thing that a transportation company can do is take a PDF version of their policies and procedures and place that on the Infinity system and then put a test question behind the policy and procedure to ensure that people who read the policy and procedure truly understand what they read. However, reading a list of policies and procedures is often boring for the learner. Additionally, people learn in multiple facets. So many trucking companies, recognizing there are a lot of new policies and procedures they have to train on, take this a step further. They go out and take individual pictures of each step of the process, and then they mirror that with the words on the policy and set up a PowerPoint, similar to the slide that you're seeing here. Part of the policy on the left of the screen, a picture on the right of the screen. Then they mirror this up with a voiceover, and create a custom training video using PowerPoint. Other companies may choose to go out and actually create their own videos. This can be as simple as using your own smartphone to film somebody properly demonstrating the policy and procedure. Or you can hire a professional film crew to come on site and create custom training videos. As a reminder, the Vertical Alliance Group Video Production Department is available for hire to come on site and film custom training videos at individual transportation companies using their own unique equipment and demonstrating their own unique policies and procedures. Additionally, prospects who are considering using our platform or current clients who want to know more about how to maximize their use of our platform are invited to come to one of our Infinity Boot Camps. At these events, we actually teach our prospects and clients how to create custom training videos and how to set up their own teleprompter similar to what you see here in this picture. Once the company has created their videos or PDFs, all they have to do is send those documents or videos to their client service representative. From that point on, the client service representative will do all of the heavy lifting to ensure the training is put onto the system and assigned out to the appropriate user groups. Additionally, the client service representative can set up reports to notify management of training compliance. Then, all management has to do is monitor those reports to ensure that compliance is being had with each of the training videos or documents that has been assigned out. The CSR can also assist in checking these reports if the company engages the CSR to do this task. <laughs> 